Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. I'm going to help you walk through this question uh, that was posted by Mayala B, uh, which is asking us to graph a system of inequalities and to find the solution region. Um, so we are given these two equations and our first step is always going to be to get each of the equations into slope intercept form, which means they resemble a y equals equation. The purpose of doing this is to ensure that the, the equations can be graphed. So we can start with this equation. We want to get the y's by themselves and always have a positive y value. So here we can say 2y is greater than or equal to, and we would have to subtract 5x from both sides, so negative 5x plus 9. We want to get 1y all by itself. So we would need to divide each side of the equation by 2. And when we divide each side of the equation by 2, that happens to all terms. So our negative 5 becomes negative 5 over 2, and our 9 becomes 9 over 2. We can do the same thing on the other side now. Um, so 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 3. We want to divide by 3 on each side to get y by itself. You could have rearranged this by like subtracting 3y instead or same thing by subtracting 2y instead over here. But when possible, it is always best to work with your positive y values. Anytime you end up dividing by a negative number, you're going to have to flip your inequality around. So if you have an option of how to move the terms, it's always easiest to do it without needing to divide by a negative number. So now we have both of our equations written in terms of an expression that says y equals um, or y is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to some term. We can treat these just like equal signs for the time being and graph these equations on the line. So starting with this equation, um, our first one, negative 5 over 2x plus 9 over 2. We'll graph this one in blue. Uh, we're going to use two separate colors, which I always recommend with inequalities, so you can more easily identify which graph is which. So we have 9 halves, which is the equivalent of 4 and a half. So we'll put it here. Our slope is negative 5 over 2, which means we're going to move down 2 and a half for every 1 that we move to the left or up two and a half for every one that we move to the right. Um, so this is a half and then one and then two to move one this way, one to the right. We'll do the same thing. We'll move up a half and then one and then two to move over one here. And we will draw a line connecting those points. You want to use a solid line here because the figure we are looking at has an or equals to. Always use a solid line if you have an or equals to, and use a dotted line if you have no or equals to. Then we want to shade above or below this line. If it is greater than, you shade above the line. You want all of your y values to be more. And if it is less than, you shade below the line. You want all of your y values to be less. We will do the same thing with the other graph. We can draw this one in purple. Any two colors are fine, but I recommend always using two different colors so you don't lose track of your graph. For this one, our intercept is at negative 1, so we will start there. Our slope is in negative 2 over 3, so we'll move down 2, and then we will move to the right 3. We will move up 2, and we will move to the left 3. Remember that your slope is always a rise over a run. And same thing, we will put in a solid line to connect those three points. Now, our graph is going to be y is less than that value. So we want to shade everything that is below. And we want to identify whether there might be any points of intersection. So we don't have any here. But the trick is, lines are infinite. So if this ever happens to you, keep your lines going until you are able to identify the region. The lines will eventually cross, so you may need to just expand your graph. 
there will be an area of intersection. And it's important that you keep going along the same slope that you had previously established. Now that we continue to stretch the graph, we can see that we have identified a solution region down here in our fourth quadrant. So because we graphed only three points, we were initially a little bit limited with our graph, but we can continue it to go until we have points that are sketched and is relatively easy once you do the work of putting in our first points. The solution region is always where you have both colors together. So this area would be our solution region and it would continue going as the two lines continued to move apart from each other. Thank you.